Hello everyone, welcome back to the tutorial. My name is Kefka14 and this will be part 2 of the Shadowgate 64 Any% percent tutorial. We're getting ready to enter our first proper dungeon, or the Tower of Disciples as it's called more properly. You can see here that we're still in the sewers, and we're about to leave. It says with a crash, the ceiling collapses. You should have been a miner. From here, we want to make sure that this hole in the ceiling is on screen and walk forward. Dell will climb up through the hole and will enter the Tower of Disciples. So it says you look around and wonder if this is one of the towers Agar spoke of. Plot twist, it is. Simply dismiss this text box and I will go ahead and spoil. There's nothing in this room for us to collect. We simply need to turn around and go through the doors. So we're going to turn to the right. And as soon as you see this door on screen, press A, and you'll go through it. Then we come into a room here. There's nothing to our right. So if we look to our left, we can see we're in a long hallway with a couple doors. We're going to be going in two out of the three doors in this hallway. The first, You can really go into either door that you prefer first, the one on the left or the one on the right. I personally prefer going into the door on the right first. It's a little bit closer to us initially. So come forward, and the way you enter doors is get most of them on screen and get close enough. See, I'm pressing A right now, for example, but I'm not close enough. So you want to get, make sure you're just, you know, close enough to the door, then press A. Coming into this room, you'll see there's some shelves. There's a bookshelf, there's a stack of wood, and there's some what looks to be kind of filing cabinets. There's only one item we need in here for progression, and it's on the other side of that stack of wood. So run up to this stack of wood, and you'll see it here. It's some rope. It says you found a coiled length of frayed rope. Select yes. We want to take it with us. Now, let's talk about speed a little. Every time you collect an item, there's a few things that happen. First of all, it gives you a preemptive text box explaining what you're looking at. Then it gives you a second asking if you want to collect it. Then it gives you a third essentially saying you took the object with you. You can mash A through each of these sections. And for the sake of simplicity, I may do that on the next object to show you what I mean. So, once we collect the object, we're going to turn back around, and we're going to leave the room. From here, simply hold forward while exiting, and press A to enter the door directly across the hallway. If you review our, the information in part one, or the prologue, you'll recall I talked about buffering. That's an example of where I buffered my movement. You can do that between every single area. I'm not doing it for the sake of the tutorial to make sure I go over all of the necessary information, but it is something that can be done everywhere in the game. Now, once you enter this room, keep this room in mind. It's extremely, extremely important throughout the course of the run, especially later, but we do have to visit it now to collect a fairy sculpture. If you look to your right, you'll see some beds and another table. If you walk up to this table, you'll notice there's an object on it. It is a pink slipper. If you examine it, it says you see a single slipper. Will you take the slipper? If you select yes, it says you can't take the slipper. Some unseen force holds it to the table. So, we can't collect this object right now, but we will be collecting it later in the run, when, once we can collect it, because we do need it to finish the game. So, upon this first visit of the room, we're not going to be bothering with that. We're instead trying to collect the sculpture, which is on the left side of the room. If you look to the left side, you can see a rocking horse, a box, and a shelf. The object we need is on the back of the shelf. If you recall, I mentioned in the previous stream that you can simply mash A really fast to immediately collect items. Or not immediately, but it dismisses each text box rather quickly. I'm going to do that with this fairy statue so that you can see what I mean. So you can see... You can dismiss and get through those item prompts quite quickly. Quickly, Once you collect the fairy statue, we simply turn around and we leave. 
from here? If we recall, we came from the left, so there's nothing over there we need. We also got the rope from the room directly in front of us. Also, it's worth mentioning that you can crouch by holding Z. It's not useful for the speedrun, but if you wanted to crouch, it could be useful, I suppose. So we're going to go down the hallway in this direction, and there is a door to our right. This door is locked currently. We will be unlocking it and using it later, but for now it is useless to us. So we're going to be continuing left through this hallway. And if you look, there's some stairs at the end. We're going to go down it. But let's take this moment to talk about corners. So here you'll see we do have to cross a corner. And I'm going to get back in position relatively in front of this door. So if you're talking speed, it would make more sense to try and cut this corner as tight as possible. But you can see we're clearly on the other side of it. But it sticks out much further than what you might would anticipate. This is something that takes some time getting used to in terms of a speedrun, is not getting stuck on corners. Looking down can help to gauge your position, but more specifically, I would recommend trying to cut each corner a little bit wide. In this next room, there's nothing in it for us at all, other than a door directly in front of us. We're going to be passing through this loading zone quite a bit. So get used to this particular room and area. It's a room we'll be revisiting throughout the run several times. So now we're in the proper Tower of Disciples. It says, with a sp or, what a splendid entrance. No doubt about it, this was one of the four towers. You'll notice a cat fell off of that chandelier. If we walk forward, we can see there's a set of double doors. This set of double doors is locked, but we will be going into them later. A couple times, in fact, for both directions. And we can see an entryway to the left. This is the direction we need to go in, but first, we're going to collect an object. Coming over here, you can see this statue of an elf or a gnome. We're going to collect the statue. Then we're going to go, th go through the small entryway we noticed before. And we're going to meet one of the most important characters in the game. This is the great sorcerer, magician, etc. Named Lakmir. Lakmir is sort of like the... I guess, Kabora Gabora of the game. For those of you who are familiar with The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and Majora's Mask. Or maybe Roru, if you will. Uh, usually arrives to sort of help us with puzzles and lead us in the right direction. Once you're done talking to Lakmir, though, just continue forward up the stairs. So, coming into this next room, there are a variety of objects we can pick up, including books. And there's some parchments, I believe, as well. Actually, no, there's no parchments in this room. We're not going to be collecting any books throughout this run. Now, for the 100% category, everything would need to be collected. But that's a tutorial for a different day. Instead, we just want to simply continue forward through this door. And again, we're going to be entering another room that's full of books and papers that we can collect, but none of them are useful to us for the run. So just continue forward up the stairs. Then we come to a series of three doors. One on our left, one directly in front of us, and one to our right. We need to enter the door to our right first. It really doesn't matter what order you actually do these doors in. It's really up to preference. I personally prefer to enter the door on the right first. And in this room, there's actually a pretty interesting movement mechanic we're going to be utilizing. If you look directly to our right, you'll see a small glass bottle sitting on that far table. We're going to be collecting it, but I'm actually going to leave the room and re-enter because I'm going to be using an interesting movement quirk to collect it. I mentioned before that you can only move in four cardinal directions, so up, down, left, and right. When you enter this room, this is one of the few situations where it's actually faster to strafe. Strafing is simply holding left or right. We're going to enter this room buffering right and 
holding slightly up on the joystick, like so. And as soon as the potion is on screen, or this bottle, which is a vial marked Liquid Sunset, mash A to collect, like so. Now, once we have the vial of Liquid Sunset, we can leave. However, it is worth noting there are a few other objects in here that are not of use to us in the Any% percent run, such as a statue there, and there's a paper on the ground behind this table that you can see right over there. We're not going to be bothering with those. Simply leave the room. From here, we're going to be going to the door on our right. Now, it's worth mentioning that when you exit a door, it automatically orientates your character in such a way to where you're facing forward, I suppose. Which may seem obvious, but if you recall, when we initially came up through the stairs, these three doors were in front of us, and now they have a slightly different layout. So it's important to sort of keep track of where you are so that you can move faster between each zone. Anyway, go into the door on the right. Now, you'll get a small scripted scene there where a table falls over. Not to be alarmed, nothing really to that. There are a few books in here to collect. There's a statue on the far table there, if you can see that. We're not going to be bothering with that. The only object we need is to our right, laying on the ground in the corner. You can see a little yellow speck over there. We're going to want to collect this. This is the ancient coin. The ancient coin is going to be very useful later in the run. Uh, in fact, it is required. Once we've collected the ancient coin, simply turn around and leave. And from here, we're going to go to the right, through this door, and we're going to be solving one of our first true puzzles. And it's a very simple puzzle, but a puzzle nonetheless. Coming into this room, there's a table directly in front of us in our way. You can go right around the table, but it is slightly faster to go left. So we're going to go to the left, and we're going to go to that far bookshelf. You can see there's like some little divots in it there. We're going to go examine this. Let's crouch down and take a look. You can see we have a statue here of a man, and there's also two empty divots. If you recall, we've collected two statues, so in order to solve the puzzle, get the div divots on screen, and you first want to scroll over and use the fairy sculpture. Like so. Once you use the fairy sculpture, we're then going to use the elf statue. This will solve the puzzle and open a way for us to go up to the top floor of the Tower of Disciples. Simply hold forward as the bookshelf scrolls and you'll automatically go up the stairs. Coming up here, you can see we're in a long hallway. There's nothing behind us other than the way back down. You can see a door on the far end of the hallway. There's nothing there for us. We just want to go in this first door here directly to our right. Now, looking in this room, there's a whole lot of space here. There's a whole lot of papers that we can collect, and books. We're not going to be getting any of them. The only object we're interested in is on this shelf on the far wall. We're going to run straight up to it, and you can see it here, sitting on this middle shelf. This is the pixie flute. We want to take the magical flute with us. Once we have the flute... We're going to turn back around and simply leave the room. And back through the door we go. Once we leave that room, we're going to go left and back down the stairs. From here, we're back in the room with the table where we solved the statue puzzle. It is quicker to go on the right side of the table. But it's not that much slower to go on the left side, which is a little bit easier orientation-wise based on where we previously came from. However, it is slightly faster, again, to go on the right side of the table. Once we leave this room here, look to our right, and we can see that we're going to go right back down the stairs. Once we go down the stairs, simply hold forward to continue through this loading zone and through the door. And then we're back in this other room with all these books. We're not going to go further down the stairs. We're going to look directly to the right and go in this direction. 
you'll see there's a step ladder here. Climb up the step ladder, and you can simply do that by walking into it like so. Up on this step ladder, there is a book. We're not going to bother with that book. You want to look at this window, go into your item menu, and select the rope. It attaches the rope to the sort of dragon statue on the wall, and the rope is going out the window. However, we can't fit through the window, except we can. Go back into your item menu and use the pixie flute. The pixie flute shrinks us and makes us small. Unfortunately, this item can only be used here as far as I'm aware. So it's really only useful for this one puzzle. Now we are, you can see we are tiny and we're standing in this windowsill. What we want to do here is look directly to our right and examine this rope. We do want to go down the rope. Once we get to the bottom, we'll find ourselves in a chasm. You cannot climb back up the rope, unfortunately. And from here, we need to grow big again. To do that, simply go into your item menu and select your pixie flute to grow big. Now we officially find ourselves outside, meaning we have truly escaped our situation. We have also beaten the first dungeon or the Tower of Disciples. If you look around, we can find ourselves in a graveyard. We're going to be coming back here later, but for now, there's nothing here to do. Simply hold forward, take a right, and continue down this path. On the other end of the path, you'll notice that we can take another right, and there's a set of double doors. We're going to enter this set of double doors. Coming here, we're into a courtyard. If you look to our right, there is a set of double doors. We will be using them later, but for now it is locked and useless. There's also something on the far end over there, but not anything we can use right now. For now, we want to go into this door and enter the cathedral. Once entering the cathedral, there's a couple of directions we can go. You notice there's a ladder over there, which we will be going up. There's a statue up there. But for now, we want to turn to our right, and we want to go this way. Then take a left here. You can see this little doorway. We're going to go through here, and go down these stairs. Now in this room, there are two objects we need. One is on the wall, on a little piece of wood. The other is next to that bookshelf. We're going to walk straight forward to here, and collect the first item, which is the golden key. We need it for a puzzle a little bit later. If you look down on the ground to the right, there is another key called the Ornate Key. Nobody knows what this key does, if anything at all, but we don't need it for the any percent run regardless. So don't bother picking it up. Instead, walk right past it to the other side of this bookshelf and you can see there is a crowbar on the ground. We want to collect the crowbar. Now we want to go back up into the cathedral. If we turn around, you'll notice there is a door right there. We can go in that door right now, but there's nothing in there for us to do at the moment. Not until we have some more objects. So we're going to continue on past it and go straight up the stairs. From here, continue forward, and we need to go towards the statue in the cathedral. Now, you can walk between the rows of these pews, or church seats. Unfortunately, you can't fit through this little gap here, so you must go through this one. If you want to not get caught on the edges of any of these things, though, you could technically walk all the way around like so. Though I don't really recommend it, it's obviously going to be a little bit slower, and it's not too hard to simply walk between those two pews there. Once you get through, we're going to go towards this statue, and if you look, you can already see there's a little bottle on the ground next to the statue. We want to examine that and collect it. It is a vial of dragon tears. A very useful item for the run. We'll be using it twice. Look to your left, and we're now going to examine this ladder. Now, this ladder is interesting. You don't actually have to walk to the other side of it. Most ladders, in order to climb them in the game, you need to simply be in front of them and facing them and pretty much against them. This ladder, however you can examine from the side. I'm not sure why it's that way, but it does save a little time. Now, once we're at the top here, if you look to the right, you'll see a chain with sort of a nail on the wall. 
we're going to walk up to the nail, and we're going to use the crowbar we just collected to pry the nail out of the wall. This will cause a ladder to descend, and we'll be able to climb up and out of the cathedral. It is worth mentioning that there is some danger to this section as well. If we fall off of this rafter, Dale will unfortunately die, and we will get a game over. So do be careful not to do that. Continuing forward, we need to go up the ladder. This ladder is also unique in that if you examine it... Oh, I was wrong. I learned something new today. Um, that's great. You can just simply examine the ladder to climb up and leave. Then we come into this loading zone here. We're officially essentially on the roof of the cathedral. Now, if you look at the ground, there are holes on the ground. If you fall into these holes, you will get a game over. For beginners... I definitely recommend making a safety save, like so. It doesn't lose too much time, and if we end up actually losing the run due to dying here, if you have a safety save, you can, you know, start your run back. The way I recommend getting through this section, and there's really one of two ways, way number one would be to go diagonally in this direction, however, the hitbox for these holes is a little larger than what it looks like. What I actually recommend is to sh look down and strafe right until you're more or less in the center, like so. Then hold forward until you get in between these. We'll then turn sort of diagonally, like so. Hold forward, come around, and we're going to be examining this window. And this will be the end of this part of the tutorial. Once we enter this window, we will be going into the second dungeon, or Tower 2, or Lackmere's Tower. Thanks for watching.